This bad boy is a GTX 750Ti, a now seven-year-old GPU with a whopping two gigabytes of VRAM to play with, 640 CUDA cores, uh, a stock boost clock of 1085 megahertz, uh, and uh, remarkably, what seems like a, an astonishingly large 28 nanometer process node. This specific one is actually a Palette Storm X OC model, meaning that this can run up to 1163 MHz instead. I know, mind-blowing performance. This is also a ridiculously low TDP card, meaning that it actually doesn't have any PCIe power connectors. No 6 or 8 pins inside, and Nvidia's funky 12 pin arrangement was just a, a dream in Jensen's mind when this was new. All it needs is the power from the PCIe slots, and actually it's a pretty mid-range cart, especially for when it was new, but thanks to it being so mid-range, a lot of people still have these in their systems. According to the Steam hardware survey, there are more 750 Ti's in people's gaming rigs than there are gamers with RTX 3060 Ti's or AMD RX 480s combined. But first, a message from this video sponsor, Ridge Wallet. They sent over this burnt titanium model, which is actually really nice. I really like the look and feel, feels very premium. Uh, it can hold up to 12 cards between its RFID blocking plates, plus cash on the back, either with a clip or a strap. You can get it in a number of different materials. Like I said, I have this very nice burnt titanium one, but you can get it in even carbon fiber if you'd prefer. Check them out at the link in the description below, ridge.com slash and use offer code TechTeamGB for 10% off your order. So for the around 1% of all active Steam gamers, with one of these in your system, or people who are looking to just get into gaming in the cheapest way possible, what's this card like, especially now in 2021, with both some modern titles and a couple, uh, let's say, lighter weight and some oldies in there too? Well, the only way to find that out is to test it, so let's get started. Now, I'm under no illusion that this is some magical card that's gonna offer barnstormering levels of performance and therefore, you know, we could run at 1440p or 4K. That's why our high resolution option is going to be 1080p, with 720p being there as a backup in case any of the titles don't do all so well at 1080. I'm also going to be testing a number of each game's uh, settings presets, so from all the way from low all the way up to high, ultra, or whatever they fancy calling it. So let's see how it performs, and uh, starting with 1080p. Watch Dogs Legion is up first, and at 1080p, I can't say that there was a, an overly playable setting. The best we got was 22 FPS average, with high running at 18, very high at just 15, and ultra? Well, that blue screened. Yeah, I have a, a sneaking suspicion that the reason for that is just how little VRAM we have on this card, as even at 1080p, at low settings, the game still reported using over three gigabytes of VRAM, meaning that it was dipping into system memory. And as we climb up the settings, you can see that at uh, on uh, very high settings, it took 6.22 gigabytes. And in fact, even on high, that was 3.97, meaning that for both high and very high settings, we were using either the same or more system memory than we have VRAM. I suspect that on ultra settings, we were really pushing the limits since I only have 16 gigabytes of RAM installed next to the 5600X that I'm using. Uh, and so there's a chance that it could have even been overflowing far enough into the page file. Moving on to Cyberpunk, I can't say that that was any better of a picture. On low settings, both textures and quality, we were getting just 16 FPS average and 12 FPS in the 1% lows. 
Medium quality and textures hurts further at 13 FPS average, high nets less than 10, and high textures plus ultra quality nets just 7 FPS average. Here's what that looked like, by the way. The game is running so slowly that the physics engine is making the AI literally walk in slow motion, and your inputs can take literally seconds to register. It's well past the point that I would call unplayable, and that's just something you'll have to deal with with this car. CSGO, as you might expect, is a lot more palatable. In fact, seeing as it's such a lightweight game, even on its highest settings, we're still getting nearly 100 FPS average, with 1% lows at over 60 FPS. A more medium setup offers around 140 FPS average, and everything on low pumps that to 231 and 160 FPS in the 1% lows. That's pretty fantastic, considering that Cyberpunk was netting just 16 FPS average on the lowest settings, and it makes it clear that this sort of esports title is really where this card shines, at least today. Moving back to a more demanding game, namely Microsoft Flights, the card is actually so low-end that when you launch the game for the first time with this card, it will give you a pop-up saying that your system doesn't meet minimum specifications. Now, you can just press OK and it will launch the game and you can play it, but there's probably a reason why that uh, message box pops up, and that's because the performance really isn't great. Even on the lowest settings, you get just 23 FPS average, which is definitely on the verge of fully unplayable. And to top it off, the visual quality is pretty bad, uh, so I can't say personally that I would be enjoying my time uh, playing this game even on the lowest settings. And if you want to step it up, medium runs at just 16 FPS average, high end is just 12, and ultra is only 8. Finally, in Fortnite, we get a pretty impressive range. Albeit with pretty potato quality, on low settings, you get 239 FPS average and 135 FPS in the 1% lows. If you step it up to medium, that kind of offers the best balance of visual quality, still not fantastic, but you still do get some, but also uh, a good healthy amount of performance at 99 FPS average and 57 in the 1% lows. Uh, and then if you do push it to high, it kind of well pushes a bit too far as you net just 33 FPS average and 15 FPS in the 1% lows, which is not great. And on ultra or epic settings, well, you get just 19 FPS average, which is uh, fair to say that you'd be giving up a pretty significant competitive advantage running anything other than medium or really at a push high, but that's kind of stretching it. So at an ATP, lighter weight titles like CSGO and with the right settings Fortnite are perfectly playable. They're a relatively enjoyable experience, and for that sort of esports game, and you can generally approximate most of those sorts of esports titles are going to perform fairly similarly, and so if that's all you play, this is perfectly fine. But if you play a, a wider library of games, especially if you want to play newer titles like Cyberpunk, Watch Dogs, or Microsoft Flight, then you're going to struggle with this card at least at 1080p. But that's where the 720p numbers come in, right? Well, let's take a look. Again, starting with Watch Dogs Legion, at 720p, it didn't actually blue screen, which is nice, uh, but on Ultra, you do only get 14 FPS average, so it's a pretty small consolation. But at medium settings, you now get 34 FPS average, and low, that's 36. And also 1% numbers that aren't too bad either, with 27 and 28 FPS respectively. It's not ideal, but if you really wanted to play this, then 720p does make that at least a viable option. Cyberpunk is a similar story, albeit not quite as uh, an impressive one, but on low settings, you now get a hair under 30 FPS average. It's still not perfect, and you get some 
pretty nasty image quality, including anything that's not in your immediate vicinity is incredibly blurry, and uh, any motion in the image is often trailed by a, a sort of weird shimmer where, because there are so few pixels being drawn on screen, each pixel has to decide if it wants to show the back half of a person that's walking past you or the road or building that's behind them, and then promptly freaks out in a fairly visible and noticeable way while you're playing the game. CSGO, unsurprisingly, does rather well, but I would argue you don't really need to turn it down, it's actually probably more of a hindrance than it is a help. While you do get more performance, on the higher settings you now get around 140 FPS average and 218 on medium and 326 on the lowest, I personally would prefer to run this at 1080p, as much like Cyberpunk, anything in the you know not immediate vicinity of your character gets incredibly pixelated and blurry and can mean that you won't be able to see enemies that are a bit of a distance away, which is a pretty significant disadvantage in a competitive shooter like that. Microsoft Flight also sees a welcome boost at 720p, with the low-end preset netting 36 FPS average and 32 in the 1% lows. Visual quality is still pretty poor, in fact poorer thanks to the resolution, but if you really wanted to give this a go on your 750Ti, at least it's now actually playable. Lastly, in Fortnite, again we have a pretty impressive range, with low settings netting you a hair more performance, now just shy of 250 FPS average and 145 FPS in the 1% lows. You also get a couple more FPS at medium, running at 103 FPS average, but the star is high, running at just shy of 60. I did have some strange model loading and uh, texture loading bugs that could pose a problem in game, which ironically were solved by pumping the settings up even further to ultra or epic at the cost of halving your frame rate. So the 750 Ti in 2021, what's it good for? Well, as the song goes, absolutely nothing. Well, actually, that's kind of a lie. In esports titles, this is perfectly fine. Like, in my testing I was getting around 100 FPS in both uh, Fortnite and CSGO on medium or high settings, and getting over 200 on their lower ones. Albeit with some reduced image quality, especially in Fortnite, but if esports titles are all that you play, this is perfectly fine. Also, as an introductory card, if you can get one nice and cheap, then again, it's a graphics card that lets you play games and that's kind of the key thing that's important, right? Yes, if you want to run a wider library of games, things like Cyberpunk, Watch Dogs, and Microsoft Flight, or a number of other fairly new, fairly intensive games, then yes, this is going to struggle, especially at 1080p. You can drop it down to 720p and use those lower settings, and you can get a somewhat playable experience out of most titles, it's not ideal, but again, if it gets you playing, that's the important part. I suppose the next question to answer then is, if you have one of these, should you be upgrading? Well, if you're only playing esports titles, unless you're having some actual issues with the cards, say stuttering, frame drops, or even input lag being a bit too high, then sure, might be you know, worth upgrading, but if you're not, it's perfectly fine for those titles. If you do want to expand to a wider library and would prefer to not see everything in about four blocks of pixels, then yes, it's probably time to upgrade, especially considering that even upgrading to something like a GTX 1060 6 gig will net you pretty much 60 FPS at 1080p in any title you want, albeit at lower settings still, but Again, it's a sizable performance upgrade for what should be, in a normal market, not that much cash. And just so that I cover all of the bases, like I mentioned, I've been using a Ryzen 5600X to test with this card. And you might be thinking, well, hey, I don't have a 5600X, I have a, an older CPU, much like my older graphics card. And that is a completely fair point 
to make. Uh, the reason that I'm testing with this is that in my previous testing, which I'll leave in the cards above for you, I found that uh, having an older CPU, especially with these lower tier or lower power graphics cards, there really wasn't much of a performance difference going from something like a, a Ryzen 1600 or 1600X up to a 5950X with the older card. With a newer 3060 Ti, there's a pretty significant performance difference, but uh, like I said, in with that older card, they basically just don't have enough power to really be overly CPU bottlenecked. Of course, if you have a low-end older CPU, like a uh, dual-core i3, for example, that will be a contributing factor, but if you have a more mid-range or higher-end one, then you should be pretty good. So, you've heard the results and my thoughts, but I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Especially if you have a 750 Ti and you're using it, what's it like? Are you planning on upgrading? If you don't have a 750 Ti, what do you think of them in 2021? Is it a card that you would you know, pick up yourself or recommend to a friend who's just trying to start out? Or would you recommend something more like a 1060 instead or anything at all? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. If you want to stay up to date on these videos as they come out, then do hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. If you want to support the channel, you can do that in a whole load of ways, including directly through the YouTube join button where you get access to our Money Mid Discord chat, sponsor free videos, and some cool emojis to use in the comments and on our weekly live streams. If you prefer to support on Patreon instead, there's also a link to that in the description, or you can check out merch hoodies or t-shirts like this one. This is an RTX 2060 I designed in Blender myself, or there's a load of other cool designs. Or if you don't wanna pay me directly, but would rather just use the affiliate links in the description when you're buying stuff from things like Amazon Overclock GK, or there's VPN options, Hubble Bundle, Streamlabs OES, and a whole lot whole load of other stuff if you want to you know check those out feel free uh, do check out the rest of the videos on the channel on the end cards including the 1060 in 2021 versus a 3060 or 3060 ti uh, so do check that out and otherwise thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video